Yes, and what I'm going to share with you today is how to use pure, simple essential oils to boost your immune system, to strengthen the body, and also to calm your emotions. We're going to learn how to use them aromatically, topically, and internally, and I'm going to share with you some of my favorite oils. And a little bit of my background to understand what I'm going to teach you today is previously when I was living in Australia, I was a lawyer working in the banks. And what I discovered when I quit everything that was my comfort was what I knew was where I had safety in order to chase my life passion is how the mind starts to get in the way the way we start to doubt and fear and begin to believe it. And so what I'm going to teach you today is or show you is a very simple tool that I found worked really well at helping me to calm myself when I was in doubt, when I was in anxiety, when I was in fear. Um, not only to calm those particular emotions but also to create even more positive, brighter emotions and patterns. So the tool that we're going to learn about is called tapping, okay? And tapping has evolved from acupuncture. But before we get to the actual tool, we need to understand, first of all, a little bit about how, in a very simplistic manner, how part of our brain works, how part of the automatic process of our brain actually keeps us from chasing what we really want. And we're also going to understand a little bit about acupuncture and what it is in order to understand how the tapping is applied. So um, the first thing we need to understand is the part of the brain that we want to affect when we're using tapping. And this is the limbic system. And the limbic system in the brain is known to some people as the monkey mind, the emotional mind, it's where we loop out. And in there we have two glands that we're going to focus on today, the amygdala and the hippocampus. Now the amygdala is the oldest part of the brain. It is the part of the brain that serves to protect us, right? And this is the part of the brain that was already developed when we were hunters and gatherers, when we were more tribal. And what this part of the brain does is because it was actually developed in that time and it was developed to protect us, then the way it protects us is to keep us in the pack, keep us with the masses. Because you can imagine when we were hunters and gatherers or we were more tribal, if you left the tribe then you could get attacked by a lion or a bear, these type of things, so it was safe to stay together. So what this gland does is it is it does many things, but in a very simplistic understanding. It's constantly searching your environment for where there might be danger, perceived danger. It's not even real. It's just what it perceives could be a problem for you. It then has to protect you from it, okay? And in order to protect you, it needs to activate your system of fight, flight, or freeze. When that system is activated, the body is in a state of stress, our adrenals are pumping, and our cortisol is going. Now, most people are living like that every day, and they have become so immune to that feeling that they don't actually understand that they are in a constant state of stress. And why is this? Well, one of the reasons is because this particular part of the brain, it hasn't evolved, okay? The amygdala still operates as though we were tribal people. So if you think about it, we don't need prote protection from uh, tigers and bears and these things anymore. So what is it doing? It's looking for where is their perceived danger? Where could you get hurt? Where could something go wrong? And it is constantly trying to pull you back, pull you back from those areas. So for a lot of people that I see, this now translates into the amygdala creating what will people think? What does the future hold? I don't think it's going to work. Um, it creates all of these doubts, 
okay, that don't even exist. And this is why people start to get um, pulled back from actually achieving what they want. The second thing that we want to look at is the hippocampus, okay? And the hippocampus is a very new part of the brain, and so there's a lot we don't know. But some of the things we do know is that it is where our memories are stored. What we don't understand is its system of storing these memories because what happens, for example, with the hippocampus um, is it keeps the past alive in the present. So what do I mean by that? I'll give you an example. You're with a loved one, your partner, okay? And you're having this conversation, you start to get really frustrated, feeling frustrated inside that you're not articulating it, you're not expressing it, but your brain is registering this frustration. It goes into its filing system, it pulls out all previous frustrations from the past. Now before you know it, you bring up something this person did six months ago that frustrated you. You don't know why you said it, you wish you didn't say it, it just came out. But the main point is, that past frustration that you have now spoken about isn't even relevant to what is currently going on. And this is where this hippocampus can keep things alive and it disrupts our understanding of what truly is happening in the present moment. So, <clears throat> what we need to understand in order to understand these glands better or this part of the brain is that our brains are neuroplastic and that's actually very exciting because what it means is that our brains are moldable, okay? And what happens is as we grow up and you have experiences, you start to create these pathways in the brain, basically. And what that does in the subconscious is it causes us to just react without even thinking because the pathway is there and we light it up every time. With the brain being neuroplastic, we have the ability to stop connecting with those pathways, to stop letting them light up, and to create new pathways. And this is why we want to use tapping, okay? To help us create new pathways that we connect with subconsciously very quickly, so that we are looking for feeling very stable, we're reducing anxiety, we're trusting in the future. and to understand how we're going to do that, I want to explain a little bit about acupuncture. So the Chinese um, discovered a very long time ago that in our bodies we have a system called the meridian system, or it's an energy system, the meridian energy system. And what they say is that we have 200 meridian points, more than 200 meridian points, and those meridian points correlate to a physical or emotional um, system or support. So a person with a particular physical illness or an emotional issue can receive acupuncture which applies the needles to the meridian points that correspond to that particular issue. And we can reduce the impact through using acupuncture. And what they discovered though is, or what is understood is if you're not using the needles, but you're still applying pressure to these meridian points, you can actually create a very similar outcome to what acupuncture did. So you can heal people, it is believed amongst some um, um, groups, that you can actually heal people through um, these particular meridian points through physical and emotional um, issues. So. The meridian points I'm going to show you that we use in tapping, they are the points that are known to be connected to this limbic system, where your amygdala and your hippocampus is. And what we're going to do when we do this tapping technique is disrupt that pathway, that natural pathway that keeps happening from these particular glands. And by disrupting that pathway, we can start to create the new pathways. So let me show you the way it works. You begin by activating here. Some people call it a karate chop. I like to tap. You can do it whichever way you feel most comfortable on the left hand. The meridian points we are going to walk through. 
that goes from the top of the head, side of the eyes, under the eyes, the nose, the chin, okay, we then come over near the heart, under the armpit, we then hold our left wrist and on a big deep breath in and on the exhale we let it all out, okay. Now I'm going to show you what you're actually going to do. If for example you were um, experiencing a lot of anxiety, okay, the first thing to focus on is your breath, right? If you breathe from the belly, okay, you activate the system in the body that is actually for contentment, for healing. If you breathe from the top of the lungs, you activate the system that activates your flight, fight or freeze. So you're putting yourself into a state of stress again. So the first thing with anxiety or, or any negative emotion that you have having, you start by focusing on the breath. Breathing deeply into the belly, okay? And you can practice this by laying down, putting a book on your belly and pushing your belly, letting it rise up and down to learn to get very deep belly breaths. Now it is said that six deep breaths is what helps to stop and create chemical change to start to calm the mind and the body. So what we first wanna do if you are feeling anxiety is when we go through the tapping points, you are basically expressing what you are feeling and you're expressing it with as much detail as you can. But then you are acknowledging that even though you are feeling it, you know that everything is okay, that it will go away and you will get through. So let me give you a demonstration of how you would articulate um, one for anxiety. What you need to do is express it in the detail that is actually happening to you. So you would begin with these overwhelming anxious feelings, this racing heart, this shortness of breath, these sweaty palms, this feeling that I can't move forward, that I am stuck. It's okay that I'm feeling this. It's okay that this is happening. I know I can move forward. I know that I am safe. I love, honor, and respect myself. And then you're going to repeat something very similar to that on every meridian point, okay? Now you don't want to hurt yourself, but obviously the firmer you can do it, the stronger the vibration on the meridian point, the more um, possibility you have of interrupting this constant patterning that happens, okay? Your subconscious direct pathway that's creating the anxiety or the fear or the doubt or if you need to be perfect at everything and you want to just relax and be okay with it, you need to articulate exactly what happens to you, that you acknowledge it, that it's okay and you can move on because what we are doing is the more you reduce the surge of energy to that pathway, the reaction that you always take, the more you reduce and you disconnect from it, then you start to light up new pathways and eventually they become the pathways that you automatically take. So in a moment I'm going to explain why I love when I work with people that I always get them to finish their statement by saying I love, honour and accept myself. But for now, we're going to move through what I would do if I was feeling anxiety in order to reduce the connection to the pathway that has been formed and begin to soften it and create new pathways. So, here we go. We begin here. As I mentioned, some people call it a karate chop on this particular point. I like to begin by doing it this way. And we begin, after deep belly breaths, remember, calm the central nervous system, bring about an effect on the body that is much more, um, uh, less energy of anxiety, 
and more of calmness and peace. So focus on the breath at all times. These over anxious feelings, this racing heart, this racing breath, these sweaty palms. It's okay that I'm feeling it. It's time to let it go. I know everything will be fine. I love, honor, and accept myself. These overwhelming anxious feelings, this racing heart, this racing mind, this block that I've created, these sweaty palms, the sickness I feel in my tummy. It's okay that I've created it. I know that it will move. I know that I can release it. I know that I can move forward. I love, honor, and accept myself. These overwhelming anxious feelings, this racing mind, this inability to move, this inability to flow, these sweaty palms, this shortness of breath, it's okay that I've created it. I know that I can let it go. I know that I can move forward. I love, honor, and accept myself. These overwhelming anxious feelings, this racing heart, this racing mind. It's okay that I've created it. I know that I can let it go. Everything will be okay. I can move forward. I love, honor, and accept myself. These overwhelming anxious emotions, this feeling in my body, this knot in my stomach, this racing heart, these sweaty palms. It's okay that I've created it. It's time to let it go. I move forward. I know that I am safe. I love, honor, and accept myself. These overwhelming anxious feelings, this racing heart, this racing mind, this inability to move forward, this block that I have created, it's okay that I've created it. I know I can move forward. I know I can let it go. I love, honor, and accept myself. These overwhelming racing feelings, this anxiousness, this sickness in my belly, this racing mind, this inability to relax. It's okay that I've created it. It's time to let it go. I move forward. I love, honor, and accept myself. I'm going to take a big deep breath in. And on the exhale, I let it go. And remember that big breath is from the belly, in and out. Now that is a way that you can use this to really start to calm the central nervous system, your body, and to start to disconnect from those patterns we've created and start to create new pathways. Now this is the next little step that I like um, everybody to understand is the reason I am very passionate about getting people to say over and over to themselves is I love, honor, and accept myself is <coughs> because I want to um, activate the reticular activating system in the brain. Now this part of the brain is incredible for me. What this system is, again, it's in the subconscious brain. So it's processing like millions and millions of bits of data per second, okay? And what happens is, it is our sonar system, if you think of it like that. And it is constantly searching our environment, millions and millions of bits of data per second at what we are interested in. That is what it's looking for. What are we interested in? And it's trying to find it for us. Now, here is what's fascinating. This part of the brain does not know the difference between past or present. It does not know the difference between reality and fiction. It doesn't know what's real or what's fantasy. It does not even know the difference between positive or negative. All it knows is what you are interested in and it wants to find it and bring it to you. So, what are you interested in? Now there has been different studies and as time speeds, well time is not speeding up, but as life speeds up with our information technology world, what has been um, 
understood is that what we are interested in, it takes that part of the brain to understand it based on what we spend more than 16 seconds, 16 seconds thinking and feeling about. Okay, so whatever you think and feel about for more than 16 seconds activates the reticular activating system to go search in your environment and bring it to you. So let me give you an example. If you have ever fallen in love with a car, okay, and you think, oh, I'm going to buy that car, or I want that car, or I love that car, and suddenly that car shows up everywhere you go, and you think to yourself, like, is this the most popular car all of a sudden? No, it's not. What has happened is you have spent the right amount of time of thinking and feeling about this car that your reticular activating system is searching for it, okay? So why is this so important? Because this is how we can use our brain, when we understand it, to create our reality, yeah? To bring to you what you really want. Now, I personally love to use it for the positive in many ways, and I also use it for the negative. So, in the negative, if you want to look at it that way, it's also a positive. If I am in a state where I'm not being the best version of myself, maybe I'm yelling at my children, um, the way that I can disrupt that negative energy in me, that mind frame, is I say to myself in a very neutral manner, Paula, 16 seconds, I don't want any more of this and I can disrupt it. So when you start to understand, hey, I've got 16 seconds to either create more of this if it's a positive or step away from it because you don't want it, then it becomes a very powerful tool to create and shape the reality of life you want. Another way to do it, and this is why when I do the tapping technique, I always have people finish by saying, I love, honor, and accept myself. So when you love, honor, and accept yourself on a real internal level, okay, you have beautiful experiences, beautiful people, a beautiful environment. So I want people to activate the reticular activating system, even if they don't truly think or feel this of themselves. But if you're saying for more than 16 seconds and you're using the vibration on the meridian points, which is connected to the subconscious, which is where the reticular activating system sits, then you're activating that system to go out and look for evidence that you love, honor, and accept yourself. So it's going to keep bringing beautiful experiences to you. So this is why it's really important to understand when you are feeling overwhelmed, when you are not feeling great, your amygdala has probably switched on. It's trying to protect you from things that don't exist. So when you start to understand that, you can start to reduce those negative emotions and feelings. When you understand that the hippocampus, part of what it does is it keeps the past alive in the present, then you can start to stop and look at your situation and be like, hang on, this feels like an overreaction. Is this truly how I feel right now? Or is this my body keeping alive some emotions from the past? And then when you understand that you can use your reticular activating system to truly create the life that you want, then you can start observing the way you behave, the way you speak, what you're thinking about. And as you become more diligent with it, your world begins to change. So remember, when you are doing the tapping, the tapping is going to disrupt your patterns that you've already created in the brain to pull you away from connecting there and to help you create new healthy patterns. It's going to calm the uh, central nervous system it's going to bring harmony to the mind, okay? And then your reticular is going to go out and look for really beautiful experiences to bring to you. The last thing I want to share is that you can also use tapping to create beautiful things. You don't just use it to release old patterns, but to also be even stronger in creating new patterns in the brain. 
So for example, you can begin your day with a simple tapping session that you begin and you can say like something like this. I choose to have a good day. I choose to be full of love. I choose to be respected. I choose to be of service. I choose to allow the magic to flow. I choose to be surrounded with nothing but love. I choose to see the goodness everywhere I go. I choose to see the brightness. I choose to see positive in everything. I love, honor, and accept myself. When you use it for the positive to create these very strong pathways, you can start your day in a very magical way. And the thing with tapping is, you don't have to motivate yourself to eat well. You don't have to motivate yourself to go to the gym. You don't have to motivate yourself to do, you know, anything in particular because you can lay in bed as soon as you wake up and you can begin your tapping. One thing I will um, mention though that I forgot, if you have very strong, overwhelming negative emotions and, and, and patterns in the mind of whether it's anxiety or, or fear or whatever it may be, if you tap in the moment that you are feeling overwhelmed is when you'll get the strongest results. Because when those parts of the brain and the amygdala and the hippocampus are firing really strongly, if you start tapping, when it's happening, then you're going to disrupt it, okay? Now, not everybody is confident to stand in public if they're feeling overwhelmed and begin to start tapping because people will think you're a bit crazy maybe. So what I recommend is you go to the nearest bathroom, okay? You just go into the bathroom, nobody knows what you're doing, and in two minutes, you're going to calm the central nervous system, you're going to disrupt the emotions and the thought patterns that are overtaking you, and you're going to find a sense of stillness. The more you do that, when those emotions are taking over you, the faster you are going to start to disconnect from that particular pattern happening, okay? Otherwise, you simply choose something in particular that you want to work on. So if it is anxiety, then you wake up in the morning and you do your tapping session about how you usually feel when you are anxious to start releasing it. And you use the positive one of choosing to have a beautiful day, choosing to find love, choosing to see the beauty, choosing to see nothing but positivity and then you're going to activate your reticula and you're going to create it. So remember, you can do it when you lay in bed the minute you wake up and then I always recommend that you do it when you're in bed right before you fall asleep. It is a wonderful way to reset the programming in the brain right before you fall asleep when it's going to go into restorative mode. Thank you. <laughs> I'm Paula Davis. You can find me at Paula Davis All Natural Living on Instagram. My email is Paula E Davis at iCloud.com or you can reach me via WhatsApp, which is where I'm most responsive, on plus five two nine eight four one eight one two one nine nine. Thank you.